G'day guys, and welcome to uh, 2016 Jayco Swan Outback. Uh, I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube about modifications to these things. Um, very helpful for me. Uh, this is one that I haven't seen before, and that's something that uh, I guess you guys, if you've got the same sort of similar model, um, is addressing the problem of the under sink storage. So this little area here. Um, there's not a lot of room under here. As you can see, um, you can barely fit a dishcloth or a plug and maybe a small bottle of washing detergent or something into there, but it's pretty much very weak, very small space. So uh, I thought I'd try and do something about it um, and uh, we'll learn as we go. Okay, so I'm going to start by first of all removing the factory food compartment holder there which uh, has got three screws so there is a retainer there but it's a short stubby Phillips screw we can quickly remove those three screws there's a large one at either end And then there's a uh, smaller one in the centre behind the lock. Now we pop that out. Right, now the door is free to hang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out the bottom shelf. I'll just run a tea towel over there. And we'll tuck that in just to support that so that we're not marking any of the shelves. Now, as you can see inside, there is a quite a large cavity in there. Obviously, the sink is sort of in the way, but when you look at this piece, there really is a lot more room to be utilised than just what is there. Um, I think Jayco could have done a little bit better, but... Uh, Anyway, we'll see what we can do. So I've done a few measurements inside the cavity under the sink and uh, went to Bunnings and found this handy little tray which is basically almost the right size. It only costs $3.99 so it's pretty much, um, I think, going to do the job. I think we'll see how we go. Alright, so we do a little test fit of our little Bunnings tray. It actually slides in quite nicely and fits into the gap. It's pretty snug. It obviously fouls on the drain for the sink and the drawer that's underneath. So we need a little bit of a modification to make that fit, but in general it's a really nice size for the area. So using some masking tape, I've approximated the position that I'll need to cut out to allow for the sink drain pipe. So we're just using our tape measure here to just work out uh, the maximum drop for our tray insert uh, before it will interfere with the maximum clearance of the drawer below. And looking at what I've got, it's pretty much about 40 millimetres. So after measuring our tray and drawer depth, it looks like 40mm works out to be bang on to the height of the internal walls of the tray. So that might work out just nicely. So I measured 28mm basically from the top of the wall down to the uh, internal wall. So I'm going to just uh, measure that transfer it to the outside. So I've transferred the measurement to the outside of the box and now I've put some tape on there to give me a line to cut.
So now I'm just approximating on the sides, basically round to where it will meet the side of the cabinet inside the Jayco, where it meets flat. So I can cut round there and cut a line up there, and it should hopefully have a nice neat finish. So I've approximated my cutout that I'm going to need to cut out for the drain that's underneath the sink. Now I've got a few options here. Um, I could definitely use probably better tools uh, than just using the grinder, but this plastic is really brittle um, and I fear that if I use my whole saw that I'll actually end up just cracking the plastic. So I think I'm going to just try and see if I can V it out with the angle grinder and um, that way it kind of just burns through the plastic and doesn't risk cracking it. Um, so we'll see how we go. Alright, so we've got most of it notched out and uh, we can just finish the rest off with a file. Okay, so we're just going to test fit our tray inside and it doesn't look too bad from First trial. I'm going to make a little modification over to the side here because what I'd actually like to try and do is squeeze the factory Jayco tray up the side so utilize even more space. So I've continued to cut along here at the same level, go along around towards the back, and so that this piece will fit in quite nicely this is the original JK piece and I've cut some small slots in here just so this piece this piece at the side here will just slot in without modifying this piece too much so it just looks nice and neat so next of all I've marked here where there will be a cutout needed to uh, go into the factory Jayco board. I'll show you that very really shortly. So this is where I'm talking about. I just wanted to drop it down just over this little bit of timber just to make it fit nice and snug and then eventually it will sit pulled right up against this wall. So the factory Jayco piece is reasonably easy to cut just with a pair of scissors. It's not too tough, I'll just do a little cross section through here. And okay, so we'll just try to fit in here. Pretty much, I think, how we want it to sit. So we'll put some screws in here, and this pretty much sits in by itself. But we might put some double-sided tape against the hot water system, and I think that's probably, yeah, the way to go. Then we've just got to address what we do with the door. So I pre-drilled seven holes, two, two at the, the side one two three at the front and then two on this side now there was no need to pre-drill the wood um, just use some small self-tapping screws like these ones here um, and you can just push them in the wood is really soft um, you can just wind them in with your screwdriver I did the front edge first then align the height with the rear this side I use slightly longer screws because you have a little bit of a gap to fill but very easy to push in, no pre-drilling of the wood needed. Um, just make sure that your front edge is nice and level so your basket doesn't hang down too low. 
So we've got our tray in, it's super solid. It's, it's a lot firmer than I actually thought it would ever be. Now we're going to try and uh, squeeze in the factory JK piece. So we'll just slot it in down the side. We'll tuck it in the little cutouts we made. Wow, fits pretty good. Actually, it is pretty snug in there. Um, I'm just thinking like my original idea is uh, a bit of double sided tape up the top and then the side and that is really not going anywhere. Um, it's very nice. Okay, so we ran a bit of double sided tape behind here against polystyrene and a little bit behind the back here against the timber and this panel is very solid. That's definitely all we need. You could add some silicon to the bottom uh, and stick it to the timber but it's really not needed it's locked in here and it, it, it really just can't go anywhere it's so light and what you'll put in there it's really not ever going to move anywhere so pretty much the inside is done now the only thing we have to address is obviously our drawer there is nothing to retain the front panel from just falling down so that's the next job Okay, so the tray install is pretty much done. Um, we've pretty much quadrupled the space that we had before. Uh, the only problem that we have now is that we no longer have the door retained. So we don't want to overextend the hinge. It's not really going to be able to support any weight. So we need to find some way of just stopping this from just overextending. So we could use a little chain from here up to here. That would be no problem. Um, but I think a nicer way it would be if we can use a gas strut. This is another one I got from Bunnings, not very expensive. Um, so we'll see if we can retrofit this in, um, and that will just allow us to then even use this as a, a little shelf. Okay, so because our strut is pretty heavy, uh, we want to uh, be able to it close to the hinges as possible. Um, we need to make sure that obviously you clear this piece of timber here with the bracket that will mount for your bottom of your strut. So basically measure from here to here and here to here and make sure that that clears and obviously we need to clear the side as we go inside here and that's pretty much will give you your measurement. So the strut from Bunnings is a 250 newton metre strut which is pretty much overkill for what we're using it for but it was what I had, let's, let's go with that. Okay, so our gas strut's all in, connected, I'll try and show you inside here. Approximately from the back face to the centre of the ball joint there is about 80 millimetres. And on the front door from the front face of the cabinet here to the ball face about 50 millimetres. Um, works very, very well. I'm really happy with the result. 250 newton metres strut is probably yeah, a little bit hard, but uh, definitely I'm pretty happy with the result. It still opens quite softly, but you could use a little bit less newton meter stride. Something like about 100, 150 would be just fine. Um, so I think for overall, I mean, considering the tray inside has cost me three dollars ninety nine, the strut is about ten dollars ninety from Bunnings. So Sort of 15 bucks, a couple of screws, I already had some double sided tape and it's made a massive massive difference to the storage capacity underneath the sink of our Jayco. So yeah, I mean uh, a couple of hours work and the best part is uh, when the missus asks you to wash up you now get a handy storage shelf to keep your beer. What more can I say? 
So if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or comment if you guys have made any of these mods. But uh, yeah, hope it helps someone out. If not, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm certainly going to enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.